This week, the House Select Committee on Economic Disparity and Fairness in, in Growth released a 30-minute documentary that unpacks the economic hardships facing everyday Americans. Titled Grit and Grace, The Fight for the American Dream, the documentary is the first of its kind produced by Congress. According to committee chairman Jim Hines, the project was an effort to break through the polarization and allow the personal stories of struggling Americans to address Americans' political rage over the state of the economy. Instead of listening to people recite statements in the hearing rooms, the committee wanted to drive home their findings in a way that better stoke and, and provoke the public. It's a powerful film that zeroes in on the fa three families who faced hardships during the pandemic and yet found the courage to persevere in pursuit of their American dreams. In its final report, the committee makes clear that today, income and wealth inequality is higher in the United States than nearly any other development nation in the world, and it's getting worse. At the start of this week, newly elected Los Angeles Mayor Karen Bass declared a state of emergency on the homelessness crisis there in Los Angeles. It was her first action in office. And in New York City, just days before, Mayor Eric Adams pushed forward a more controversial method to deal with rising homelessness in his jurisdiction. The Select Committee released its own set of policy recommendations along with the documentary, including greater investment in affordable housing and increasing the responsiveness of economic security programs such as SNAP. As Chairman Hines told the New York Times, the film was, quote, an opportunity to hear, to tell the stories of Americans, and to try to collapse some of the stereotypes that exist. In June of 2021, Democrats and Republicans in Congress came together to study and propose solutions to our growing economic divide. In the wealthiest country in the world, most people are struggling economically. People are trying to move up, and often we see things get in the way of that. Here are three stories that capture the ambition, hunger, passion, and love that define resilience. The Cooks, whose time is consumed by caregiving, I met the boys. I didn't see special needs. Alicia Villanueva, who found passion in sharing her culture's riches. I was thinking how I can contribute to this country. And Joseph William Graham Jr., still ambitious in the face of injustice. Can we achieve human dignity and build a life for your family that's stable and a legacy to leave behind them? A legacy of grit and grace. That was the trailer for the new documentary, Grit and Grace. And joining me now is Eric Harris, the co-creator and senior producer of that documentary. He is the communications director of the House Select Committee on Economic Disparity and Fairness and Growth. Uh, welcome, Eric. Um, I like it. I, I love this approach. Uh, what drove the committee to present its findings like this? Uh, well, thank you for having me on, Michael. I mean, for the most part, congressional hearings and committee reports are about as boring and dense as the day is long. So yes. that's why we try to do things differently on the Select Committee on Economic Disparity and Fairness and Growth. You know, our chairman, Jim Himes, always says that you can engage people on an intellectual level, but to really move them to help Americans shift their attitudes and perspectives, you need to touch their hearts. And that means telling stories of dignity, resolve, and limitless ambition. And that's exactly what we did here, Michael. We made a first of its kind documentary that tells the story of hardworking families determined to achieve their version of the American dream. So the select committee uh, found that in 1940, 90% of children out earned their parents, yet people born after 1980, millennials, are only 50% as likely to out earn their parents. Can Congress somehow address this downward social mo mobility? And if so, how do they begin to do that? I think Congress can play a really robust role here. I think the first part is recognizing that economic disparity doesn't care if you voted for President Trump or President Biden. It doesn't discriminate based on your political philosophies or where you live. It impacts all of us. It reaches across age, race, gender, zip code, and unchecked, it can actually tear at the very fabric of our democracy and society. So I think the first step for Congress is recognizing that this is an issue that transcends politics and that to truly do this the right way, we need to listen to Americans where they live all across this country. That means talking to individuals in rural communities, suburbs and exurbs, urban centers, those who are in the Midwest, those who are in the Southwest. Um, it, Congress does a lot of talking, and I think solving economic disparity means doing a lot more listening this time. 
So uh, to that to that point, the Select Committee's ranking member, uh, Congressman Brian Steele, uh, said that uh, the panel embraced ideas from both political parties to create this documentary. So talk to us a little bit about how the committee accomplished that in, in the face of all of the acrimony that's on the Hill uh, and how it informed uh, the creation of this of this particular film. Uh, that's a great question. You know, the, people really don't want more of the same here in Washington. The acrimony, the the caustic atmosphere, the you know, the one upmanship. Um, people really want Congress to listen and to work together. Uh, and we did a really great job of that on this committee. In a bipartisan way, we traveled the country to places like Lorain, Ohio, to Seattle, Washington, Brownsville, Texas, and we listened to the most pressing economic challenges facing those communities. And we didn't care if we were talking to Republicans or Democrats. We knew that we were talking to Americans who truly wanted to have a space in this 21st century economy. Um, and so really, I think the, the core to our work here on the committee is ensuring that both Republicans and Democrats can take their collective issues and ideas, find out what works within them, and create a foundation for that next Congress to work on. You know, Michael, we're only about two weeks away from this committee no longer existing. So it really is up to the next Congress in the 118th session to put their political partisanship and blinders aside to truly work for a better issue here, and that is making sure that every single American has access to this economy. I, you know, I think in a lot of ways, Eric, that's why this is such an innovative way to sort of get the, the country's attention and to really kind of focus Congress a little bit. You, in the process, interviewed over 150 people across the country, uh, but you settled on three. Uh, and, and yeah, the issues of time and all of that. But what were you specifically looking for in highlighting in this documentary that these three families brought, uh, brought to that messaging? You know, we, we interviewed almost 150 different families for this project. And what we were looking for is diversity in a slew of different ways, and not just the usual sense of diversity in terms of ethnic and racial diversity. We wanted diversity in terms of where these individuals lived. We wanted diversity in terms of the economic challenges they faced. And we wanted diversity in terms of the perspectives of the families featured here. Um, and we hope those who watch this film are left with this profound sense of empathy. That's really what this film was about. We hope that when they meet the families in our movie, they feel warmth and just a little less alone in a country that many people find cold in this very caustic political climate. Um, but what we found out in interviewing all of these families is that uh, Americans have stories to tell. Uh, no matter how hard the challenges they face, no matter how, how emotional the hardship was, everyone wanted to have their voices elevated and amplified in a way where their dignity was center stage and that their fight for the American dream was worthy of being uplifted. And I really hope that we did that with this film. Well, Eric, I, I think you are well on your way in doing that, and I really appreciate the fact that um, you're focusing uh, attention on that American dream and helping Americans express that dream as much as they can. Thank you very much. It's such a real pleasure to have you be a part of the conversation tonight. Very much appreciated, Eric.